Okay, so now we're going to talk about the vital signs functions on the LifePack 35. So I uh, have a bunch of vital signs in here currently so that we can look at how all these different features work. I already showed you in our first video where the pulse ox, where the blood pressure, and where the end tidal circuit are located. And those features don't work any different than how they currently work in the LifePack 35. So I've connected everything up here to a patient, uh, including the end title. As you can see, the end title has been plugged in here. And I'm seeing the display screen of what it would look like for a patient that is connected to all of these things right now. So let's start uh, at the bottom of the screen and work our way up. So we'll start with the blood pressure. So on the LifePak 15, you had a manual button, the NIBP button that you would press in order to get a blood pressure. On the LifePak 35, there's no longer a manual button that you press. Instead, you see that you have this start button right here on the screen. So it is currently on a timer, a five minute timer. But if I had just placed this on the patient and wanted to get a blood pressure, I simply would press start. And so you're going to see it's going to inflate the cuff as it would with any other patient. Just make sure that we have the appropriate size cuff on the patient, whether it's the adult, child, uh, infant, or the extra large adult BP cuff. Remember, if you don't have the correct size on the patient, it can actually give you a false reading of what their blood pressure actually is. Another thing to keep in mind is if you are dealing with a pediatric patient, so that its um, uh, monitor is set in the appropriate uh, levels of where their vital sign should be, you want to press the alarms button here at the bottom of the screen. And then you'd want to, where it says patient age here, you'd want to either select pediatric or if you have a neonate, neonate. And that way it won't pump the blood pressure cuff way high, it won't set an alarm for a blood pressure that on an adult would look really low, but for a pediatric is normal. So if you have a pediatric patient, just click on the alarms button and then select the right age. Okay, so other things here with the, the blood pressure, okay? You'll see next to the start button there are two other things. The top one is the time, and that's the interval of how often it will take a blood pressure. So if I click on that, I'll get different times here, okay, where I can take it as long as every 15 minutes or down to as short as every two minutes. So currently, I have myself on five minutes, but if I wanted to switch it up to every 15 minutes, or even up to 30 minutes, which you know we would never use because we don't have that long of transport time. I can just press 15 and then it's changed it there on the screen as you see. Next, you see here um, your upward limit. So that's the upward limit that based on the fact this is an adult that it's going to pump up to. Now if it gets to that limit, uh, for example, it's set at 160, and it's still detecting uh, a pulse there, it will pump up higher. But you can click on that, and especially for individuals who um, are, you know, maybe frail, older, have lower blood pressures, you can adjust that and it won't pump up their blood pressure as much. Okay, so moving up the screen here, now that we've looked at the blood pressure size, the next feature in blue is your pulse ox. So that there shows you what the current pulse ox is of the patient as reading off of my monitor. Above that is our end title. So first you will see here both the uh, current CO2 reading, so current 35, and then right below it, just like on the LifePak 15, you have what the patient's current respiratory rate is. And then next to it, you have your waveform. And of course, my waveform looks funny right now because I'm talking uh, and not just sitting here breathing. But I'll take a second and I'll just breathe normally so you can see normal waveform on the monitor. Okay, and then last at the top in our green is going to show our current pulse. And then if we have our 
electrodes on the patient, at least a four lead view, then we will see our current cardiac rhythm there in green. So those are the uh, vital signs functions. One of the other things that I want to show you here that's new with the LifePak 35 is uh, the trending and patterns feature. So this is really nice, especially when we have critical patients that we're looking at, especially trending blood pressures or maybe trending uh, pulse ox, et cetera, especially when we're getting to the hospital and reporting to the nurse or physician in terms of where the patient was initially when we saw them and then through the course of our care, how uh, their condition either improved or deteriorated. And so now, you know, before we had to press code summary and kind of look at the trend ourselves. Now the LifePak 35 actually does that and graphs that for us. So first we'll start uh, from the top and work our way down. The first feature here is going to apply only to ALS clinicians, but it is helpful for BLS clinicians to know in case your ALS clinician needs you to change something when they don't have a hand to do so. So there are options for each of these that I can get into if I specifically click on the color next to that. So if I click on the green here next to the pulse, you see that I have a button for alarm, for trends, and then lead select. For all of these, it's going to look the same with the exception of there's not going to be a lead select on the other ones. So if I click on this and I click on alarms, that's going to give me my alarm options that I can turn on and off. And that will be different for each of these things. So with this one, it's the alarm option for the pulse rates. So it's going to alarm if the pulse is below 50 or above 140. So you can change those options there. The next thing to keep in mind with this one is the leads. So if I want to change a lead that I'm looking at on the screen, I can click lead select, and currently, because I'm connected to a rhythm generator, it's on pads. But if I had this on a patient, I could select from any of those leads there, from lead one and going down. Same, the other thing that I can do is let's say that I want this uh, larger because I'm looking at something. I can increase the um, size here by simply... by simply pressing the plus button. And you see there where my ECG gets larger. Its default is at 10. And that goes back down to normal. So if you're trying to enlarge it because you want to see something um, that you're trying to analyze, that's how you do that. OK, so moving down here with the end title CO2, um, you can, again, set your alarms, and then we can look at trends. So with trends here, there's a couple things. I can look at the respiratory rate trend, or I can look at the CO2 trend. So if I click on respiratory rate, now what you see here is this orange graph has come up. And I know it's a little bit hard to see on the screen, but basically this is showing the trend of my respiratory rate with time going across the bottom and then the rate going up and down vertically. So I can see over time what the respiratory rate is. Same as if I click CO2, I can now do that. And see, it shows both of them right there next to one another. There's a similar trend on the pulse as well, too. I could click on that. And then it doesn't have enough data currently because I haven't been connected enough, long enough to do that. I can do the same with O2 saturation, click trends. Again, right now there's not enough data in there because I haven't been connected long enough. And then finally, with BP, I can collect or select trends. And then currently, actually, I think my issue is I have too many other things up. There we go. So I click my trends, and then now I can see my blood pressure trend there on the bottom of the screen. So that's actually very helpful when we especially have critical patients that we want to report on what we saw initially uh, and then how they've either improved or deteriorated over time. Whereas before we had to print off the code summary and then look at the sheet and then kind of make our own patterns and judgments, now we can actually see those graphs directly on the screen with trends. 
So that is the major vital signs functions and how you can uh, do the different options, settings, and trends on the LifePack 35 monitor.